another summer afternoon comes to an end. Marta is already a woman. She's 16 years old. Maria imitates all her gestures awkwardly. She's 14 years old. In the kitchen, our mother is doing something simple, superfluous, and another summer afternoon comes to an end. The lightness that comes in through the bedroom window that touches the folds in the curtains is yellow and sweet, honey. Beyond the window, the sun comes down on buildings and for a moment turns their edges incandescent. The lightness touches the face of my sister, Martha, sitting on her made bed, and touches the face of my sister, Maria, sitting on the floor, sitting on her feet, knees bent in front of her, leaning against the wall. Martha has a boyfriend, and no one knows, no one must know, except for Maria. Sometimes at dinner, Maria and Martha exchange a look because something has reminded them of their secrets. Maria dreams of the day when she too will have a boyfriend. She dreams about him. For a few moments, like a lightning flash, she believes she can see his face, every detail, his eyes, the lips, the lines that are so real. Marta and Maria's voices are dreams, and dreams are mingled together. Marta describes everything she feels. She describes a thousand times all the little encounters she has with her boyfriend, everything she believes, everything she understands. Maria describes the stories she has read in romance novels. She describes how they end. She says, if this hadn't happened, and if that hadn't happened, and if he hadn't been jealous, and if she hadn't been proud, Maria listens to her sister as though she has finally met a heroine from a romance novel. Marta listens to her sister, imagining herself having the same dilemmas as the heroine from a romance novel. Their voices are feminine and luminous. The afternoon draws to an end slowly. Simão arrives from work, comes by me and my mother. Time is calm over the objects of the world and in the motion of the world. My father will arrive later. Until then, the evening falling like torn paper raining down from the sky. And now, just a little, little short excerpt. Granddad is the loveliest of the world, said Elisa sitting on a piece of wood on the carpentry shop floor. It must have been summer, because the sun had been very hot and the cooler time of day was slowly beginning. I stopped what I was doing to look at her with a smile. Elisa was three, four years old. My Martha still lived in the house near the workshop, and she was out on the patio doing something with a straw hat on her head. It was Saturday. Granddad is loveliest of the world, said Elisa, when I was not yet sick, and I didn't know that my time was sipping away. Elisa was three, four years old, and she should have come and be with me. She wanted to come and be with me. I was making a door frame or a window frame or something when I saw her come in, so very little, about her body still unsteady from climbing the stairs. For a moment, her body was catched by the sunlight. She sat down on a piece of wood on the carpentry shop floor. Granddad is loveliest of the world. I took her in my hands and went to the patio door. Martha was still living in the house near the workshop. She had a straw hat on her head, and she was sitting with Francisco on the bottom step. They were eating oranges and talking. In front of them, wedging his tail was a dog. I went down the stairs, and as I approached them, Elisa was playing with my hair. I put her down on the ground, and she began to run around on the pine shavings. I stayed a bit to make the most of the cool. I peeled an orange. We talked about something that was more or less important at that moment. But that was a long time ago. The sky was loveliest of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs>